So it's a million degrees outside and like clockwork, your AC is not working. Um, let's say for instance, your fan is running inside of the house or your furnace is circulating, but there's no cold air coming out. I'm gonna show you how to go through this outdoor unit. We're gonna have your air conditioning running in about five minutes. Let's get into it. So we were about four days into a heat wave and I ended up getting home from work and it was crazy hot inside of my house. And I knew that something must be going on with my air conditioning unit out here because I could hear my furnace fan running like it was circulating air like it should. And it was set to cool mode, all that stuff checked out, but I wasn't getting any cold air blowing. Sure enough, when I came outside and I stood beside this thing, it should be running. You should be able to hear it. And there was nothing, nothing at all. So what I did was I grabbed my safety chopsticks here and I actually tried to spin those fan blades. And when I spun those fan blades, all of a sudden they started to spin. And I knew, okay, we're onto something here. Um, from dealing with a lot of the hot tub stuff, I'm used to dealing with motors and capacitors. And I'm thinking that the capacitor in this thing is what gave up the ghost, okay? So just to kind of give you a little bit of context, these machines, sometimes we think they're complicated, they're really not, okay? You're gonna have a fan, you're gonna have a compressor, you're gonna have a condensing coil here, uh, and then you're gonna have a contactor and a capacitor, okay? What I'm gonna do guys, I'm gonna take the side of this off of here and I'm gonna show you what the issue is and nine times out of 10, this is what your problem is gonna be. So let's get you in a little bit closer here. Okay, so like I was saying before, this piece here, this section is the fan and you can kind of see the blades here. If we look inside through the grates here, hopefully the camera will pick it up, but we're gonna see kind of a black cylinder down in there. That's the compressor. This is my condenser coil, okay? And all the other goodies I talked about, the contactor, the capacitor guys, that lives behind this cover. So let's go ahead and get this cover off, okay? Now, to get this cover off, I'm gonna have one, two, three, and four screws that I'm gonna take out. So these should be about a 5 16 So let's get that done. Okay, just one really important thing I wanna mention though. Before we take this cover off, I wanna make sure that A, I've turned off my furnace. So I've turned it off at the switch inside, but it's also super important that we find the electrical disconnect for this air conditioning unit, because this thing's 240 volts. We do not wanna mess around touching 240 volts. So we wanna find our disconnect, we are gonna open it up, and then we're gonna pull out that little, that little breaker. If yours is a circuit breaker style, obviously you're just gonna turn that off and that should then kill power to this unit here then we can go ahead and open it up safely all right and just like that now we've got access to the inside here all right so we got those screws out and i'm just going to pull down on this panel here just like that and now i've got access to my innards all right so i'm going to take you guys through everything that we see in here all right, so you're gonna see this brown set of wires coming in here, and it's gonna go to this box right here. This box here is a contactor, okay? And basically what this is, is this is a really fancy on-off switch, okay? This big, thick cable you see here coming up this way, connecting to the bottom here, this is my 240 volts coming in. This is my wire, my 24 volts coming in from my, uh, from my furnace my panel essentially, <clears throat> and then here's where that 240 volts shoots over into the capacitor, okay? Now this capacitor, think of this like your lightning can, all right? And what that capacitor is gonna end up doing for us, folks, is it takes, <clears throat> it takes power, energy, it stores it so it can rapidly discharge it. When you've got things like a compressor or a fan, it takes a lot of juice to get them going, and I suspect that's what my problem is. And sure enough, when we take a closer look here, guys, yeah, it's not supposed to look like that. <laughs> so nine times out of 10, the problem's gonna lay right here with this capacitor, all right? So what we'll do here is I'm gonna remove the screws right inside here so I can loosen this can up, and then I'm gonna tell you how we identify a replacement. All right, so like I was saying before, folks, this guy right here, this is your contactor. So what happens is the wires from your thermostat come into here, and when the unit calls for cold, uh, these wires send voltage into the contactor. And basically what happens is this little button here gets depressed, okay? If you had the system energized, and I'm not advocating you keep this thing powered up, you, you do you when it comes to electricity. I, I, you know, I can't take any liability for that. But if you want, did want to test this thing out, if this was hot, if you came out here and pushed this button, and I would use like, you know, uh, something insulated to do that with, 
this thing should click and fire up. Okay, so that's a good way to test this. However, these contactors very, very seldom go bad. Okay, the capacitor on the other hand, this is the thing we gotta look at, all right? So if you take a look, I can see the top of this thing and maybe the camera's gonna pick it up. It's super bulged, okay? That means this thing's likely toast, okay? This is the thing we wanna replace. Now, if you take a look on here, okay, and it might be a little tough to see, but there's gonna be some designations here. This is a 30 microfarad, um, 30 UF, that's microfarads, basically. So you got a 35, a 30, 30 over five, and then you've got a plus six um, or minus 6% differential from there at 370 volts. This is what you want to find. What I did was I went online and I just Googled this number right here and I was able to, to get a replacement, okay? So another thing you might wanna keep in mind is this is a capacitor. This thing's like a little lightning can, okay? It's gonna hold charge. Now, this one, because you can see it's already basically ruptured, it should be discharged already. But if you are concerned, you literally can just take a pair of pliers like this, hold the insulated end, and when you do this here across these terminals, you're basically discharging this thing, okay? Again, you wanna make sure all your power's off before you start poking around with metal pieces in here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my replacement piece and I'm gonna pull these wires off one by one and reinsert them into my new piece and I'll show you the order that I'm gonna do that in because there's a few things we gotta be mindful of. What's gonna happen? I'm, hope, I'm hoping that this one's gonna pick it up here. Maybe, possibly. You're gonna see there's some designations here, okay? There's gonna be some writing here. This one is, says Herm. This side here says Fan. This side here is C, okay? Um, again, until I pull these off, it's gonna be hard for you to see, but there's Herm, there's Fan, and there's C on this unit as well. All I'm literally gonna do is replace, uh, pull the wires and add them to this one in those same exact spots. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do with my needle nose pliers now. Awesome, glad the camera caught that. <clears throat> So there it goes. Okay, got my Herm wire on there. Gonna get my fan wire on here. Okay, and my last two here are gonna be my C's or my commons. Let's get these off. Okay, so there you go guys, now you can see. I've got all those new wires connected. Now, again, I'm gonna show you guys this capacitor. If you take a look, look at how bulge this guy is here. This more than likely was my problem. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go and I'm gonna put the bracket back on this guy. Uh, I'm not gonna put the side on yet. We're gonna try to do a test fire and we're gonna see what happens here. All right, so what we're gonna do now is before I put the side back on, we're gonna go ahead, pull all that stuff I have sitting on top of the AC unit off. I'm gonna plug in that, uh, that disconnect switch back over here, and I'm gonna go test fire it. You guys are gonna keep an eye on this unit for me, and let me know if it starts smoking, or if it catches on fire, or if it blows up, or what. All right, check back with you in just a second. All right, guys, and just like that, you heard the unit fired right up. That contactor clicked, she spun right up. Cool air is gonna be blown out of the vents. So guys, it's just that easy to be able to fix or repair your own AC unit. So as always, if you found the video helpful, consider hitting that like button, subscribing to the channel, makes a huge difference for me. All right, folks, catch you in the next video. Bye for now.